Hello, I'm currently at the University Station of the Seattle Light Rail and I'm here because this used to be the last station of the Seattle Light Rail system until today. But today, three more stations have opened north of here and that's long time coming because there's still more than a hundred blocks of the city this way. But until today, there has been no train coverage despite this project running since 1995. So big day for the expansion today. So I want to document what it is like and show you about Seattle's transit overall and tell you about the good and the bad of it. So here's the station I'm going to enter and this station is right next to the university. Here on my right is the stadium which um, the Husky team plays in and that's the college team for the University of Washington and that's the biggest and most famous university in the state. So I'm going to take the train and then I'll see you again at the next station. Some colorful bathroom tile from the 70s here. It's new and clean, I like it. And it's pretty breezy. It's not very crowded either. Today, there have been more people because people want to see the new stations like me. Here we have one train departing south towards a place called Ango Lake, which is the southernmost station. And the train is here now, so let's get on. This is the one line to Northgate. A little more people than usual, but not too bad. It's not crowded like it used to be before the virus. Trains are pretty nice and new and clean. That's one benefit of the system being pretty new. You can see here the new signage where it already goes beyond University of Washington. There's now U District, Roosevelt and Northgate. So I'm going to be getting off at every station and show you what they're like. Here they have some kind of projector talking about the system. Okay. Northgate Link, that was the name of the, trend, the extension. I see some art installation here which is trying to make it look like uh, you're at the city. It's like an alley or something, but in fact it's in the station underground. And there are two ways out of here. This is Brooklyn Avenue and that's 43rd. I'm going to choose Brooklyn and 45th, which is the more central area, but I walk around overall. Here are some facts about the project. 3.5 miles were added for the new three stations. Five million hours it took, that's interesting. And the next station over is in two minutes. Roosevelt, where I'll go next. Sound Transit does not tolerate harassment. Please report any harassment to security or transit employees. And here we are outside. It looks like an event actually for the sake of the opening of the station. I will take a look and see what's going on. They have been building out these parts. Whatever the train is coming, there's more and more development coming, and I'll show you some of that. But first, let's take a look at the station from the outside. And here's a central view of the new station, new district station. It's actually very low profile. The vast majority of it is underground. Here, it's um, unobtrusive. It's kind of sneaky. I like that, actually. Here is the other end of the station, 43rd and Brooklyn. And it looks like here too, continues the event onto the main part of this neighborhood. This is the U District. Nearby here is University Avenue. 
of Encode you have. And a um, $3 food walk, nice. Here's the bigger profile on this side of the station. Yeah, this is a lot more obvious than the other side. Your district station. I'm seeing here a lot of bike racks, that's quite nice. Biking with, um, or riding the train with the bike is possible as well, but it's actually easy to do this if you're feeling safe. You can come here by bike, lock up your bike and go downtown and that way you're not hampered by your bike once you're there. You don't gotta worry about where to put it. So many of the stations actually have bike racks or even kind of lockers for your bike. So they're trying to make a combination of biking and training and train a viable option. And an alternative to cars because Seattle has been mostly a car city and it actually continues being primarily a car city. Here I am seeing new development on the ground. The street has been redone. As you can see, bus only and bike only. No car can go on this particular street. So some policies uh, against cars are being implemented to reduce traffic and congestion and kind of tell people to use other means. And here we go, a large amount of people, many of them young students, I'm guessing, are now here. And they have closed the road. So I am strongly in favor for closing roads because Cars are loud, polluting, unpleasant, and so on. And America lacks areas like this where you can actually just enjoy yourself on the street. I'm pretty impressed with the turnout here. There are a lot of people. And that's a good thing, honestly. People need to come out because they have been locked up indoors for a very long time. and not socializing and so on so it's great to see people have come out and it's for an occasion that i like you know it's a expansion of the transit system it's giving people more connectivity it's giving them alternatives to get around so they can be up to more without having to buy cars and then have to drive on these streets right here if this could be permanently closed and have this hangout right here permanently foot only I would much prefer that because it makes it such a more vibrant and pleasant place to be. So that's something I'm fully in support of. And it's great to see here. I think the reason they did it is to give people a glimpse of what could happen if more roads were to be shut down and you could create more of these areas that are pedestrian zones. And pedestrian zones are common all around the world, but in particular in Europe. Also some exist in Asia and they're always very pleasant probably the best part of town always where the people gather and like i was saying earlier america has not been very good at that and in many cases it's against that but seattle is actually one of the few cities where it is a walkable city not fully walkable but it has core parts that are walkable and more and more of it is becoming walkable especially because the train system which is being built it will much more so become walkable in the future and more walking zones like this are being created. This right now is temporary, but it is a glimpse of what could be if we are to shut these streets permanently. Some of them should be, some of them should not. Some of them it's harder to do, some of them it's easier. This one in particular, I think it could easily be shut down forever, and it should, because look at how vibrant it has become just overnight. So I'm going back in and taking the train to the next location. I'm now on the next train to the Roosevelt station. It's very nice and empty and clean. So it's a more pleasant ride. So most people must have gotten out at the University District Station. Next stop, Roosevelt. And you're seeing how quickly these stations are coming up. They really are two minutes away from each other. Now entering Roosevelt. Doors to my left. And 
here we are, Roosevelt Station. Literally two minutes later, I'm watching the timer on my GoPro. First thing that greets you is this um, kind of a moose, lo-fi moose statue. And there's some attempt of art here, but it, it is really half-assed. You see here how it's all really, really unpleasant looking exposed concrete. And they've put some really bizarre attempt of beautifying it, but it's like they ran out of money or desire to work, or I don't know, because what is this? You know, it's, it's such a poor attempt at art and this concrete has been left bare. It, it really doesn't look good here. And that gets me to one of my points I want to make is that this project costs so much money. It costs billions of dollars for just three stations. So yeah, here I am disappointed by the aesthetics. The space looks okay, you know, it's large ceilings and spacious. You don't feel too depressed and constrained, but the finish is not here. Upper level, they put more bathroom tiles, which is better than bare concrete, honestly but it could be something artistic. If you have seen Moscow stations or St. Petersburg or something like that, you know what I'm talking about. And here's the outside of the station. It's not a bad space, it's a nice space and it's brand new, so it's very clean. But aesthetically on the inside, they blew it. And so I am outside now in the Roosevelt neighborhood of Seattle. This neighborhood is up and coming, especially because the train is now here. And this gives you a fast connection to downtown. This is a station from the outside. It's low profile, I would say, on this end. What has been happening in Roosevelt is many more developments like that one across the street, where now they're increasing the density. They have rezoned based on the fact that the train is coming and they are making these areas more so hubs of activity of various types, commerce and residential and others, maybe business too. So here we go, a very large building, almost a whole block long is put right next to the station so that you can easily get people in and out, you know, this, this decongest the streets and that is what I do like. You can see now I'm getting a little bit um, mixed in my feedback and my comments here because I like what they're going for. I like that the city is getting transit. I like that it's becoming more walkable but I really have a problem with the execution being of such poor quality and especially the aesthetics of it but also the fact that it has taken 26 years to build just one line and that's for billions and billions of dollars so it's not for the lack of money but simply the execution is slow and it lacks vision. And they have also made many mistakes. There have been many delays and they're always out of money somehow. So just recently I saw that they are yet again out of money. They're trying to scale down the proposed system even though we've already paid for most of it. And they spent something like $8 million I read on conducting a study of why they're always out of money. Well. What kind of insanity is that? When you have to spend eight million, it's obvious that's why you're out of money because you're spending like a fool. It's not a mystery why they're out of money when they're spending eight million on a study for that. So I don't know, you know, it's not all good. There's good and bad. And many people are critical of the fact that um, the taxes have been pretty harsh when it comes to the car tabs that we pay. They are something like seven, eight hundred dollars a year for a lot of us and despite paying that we also have to pay to get on the train and the issue is that the train has taken so long to build the train from the airport or so a little bit south of it to here is not that long you know other cities around the world build huge networks of transit in the same time frame this is almost three decades now but here in seattle we have one line and it's not even all the way complete yet and the next line is not scheduled to open for another three years, at which time we'll have two lines for 30 years. And that to me is a shame and a waste of resources and a waste of time. So 
yes, I'm supportive of what they're doing, but I want it done better, much better, more efficiently. I want them to use expertise from other parts of the world that have done all this already. Not so much of an event here in the Roosevelt neighborhood, but it is an up and coming neighborhood. It's not yet as dense as the U district. So I'm going to go under this I'm going to go under this magnificent art installation here and get back on the train to the last station called Northgate. Okay, so far one station I enjoyed and this station I was disappointed by. Let's see the third one. Uh, this is the one line to Angle Lake. Oh, this is Angle Lake. <laughs> North Gate. I got on the wrong train. It's easy to do when you're filming and talking and you don't know which way you entered in a brand new station. Now this train is crowded, a little bit paranoia with the virus, but if I don't get it today, I won't ever get it. I just exited the tunnel here. Looks like we're going up on a ramp. And right next to us is the I-5 freeway, it looks like. And I'm seeing an interesting bridge, which I will talk about soon. Over there is the, Seattle, the North Seattle College in the distance. You, you see here now the bridge that connects across the freeway to the college and the train station. This was so hard to do before you had to walk for like 40 minutes to go around the freeway. It was crazy. Now this helps so many students and so many people to get around. So this bridge, I really, really recommend, uh, commend them for making this bridge. It has been a long time coming and needed. It's uh, strictly for pedestrians too, which I really like to see. We need more and more of that. I'm also a big fan of overpasses because you don't have to stop traffic and also you don't get hit by a car once in a while like happens in typical intersections. So that's good. I really, really like that bridge. <laughs> Looks like a large crowd here in Northgate has gathered for the new station. Again, this is the first day any of these three stations are opened. Let's take a look. <laughs> People like the camera. Okay, I am now outside at the Northgate station. And what used to be here before the station was always this mall. This is Northgate Mall. And they say it's the first mall ever in America. It was built here. When I used to go to this college, I also used to work in this mall and live in this neighborhood. So I'm very familiar here and I want to see how it has changed because of what they've built here. And I'll talk about some of the plans. You can see how they're destroying buildings here, trying to renovate the place. That is good. That is rather new, I think maybe 10 or 12 years development. And more and more is being done. Here is a transit center or here's a park and ride where you should be able to park your car if you don't live in walking distance to the train and then take the train and go downtown, whether to work or to go out or for some event like the sports. So now I have to find my way out of the station and see how I can look at the train. Uh, I need to find my way out of the station and see how I can take a look at that bridge because actually the bridge is one of the things that interests me the most here because I used to really not like having to go to the mall the long way.
here you can see some pointers. The ice center is here, which is interesting. I'll try to get to it and take a look because this neighborhood is now going to be the training ground for the brand new team in the NHL, which Seattle is hosting, called the Kraken. And they're going to train in this neighborhood. Here I have a decent look of the bridge. You see how a lot of people are walking on the bridge now. I really, really like to see this kind of stuff in the US. I've seen it in Asia, I've seen it in Europe, not so much in the US. What I'm going to do now is go out and get on that bridge and walk the bridge. Okay, here is the bridge. It even has multiple ramps off it. One goes down this way towards the transit center. One goes up towards the freeway and the college and one is where I entered to the train station. Here is the station itself. It's elevated off the ground. On the ground level run buses and cars. It's a solid, robust station. This one, I like it a lot more. However, you see how much, again, exposed concrete they've left. It's not at all aesthetically appealing the way they've done a lot of it. The bridge is nice to see. I see many people using it and it's wide and people are biking as well, which is good. So it's going to get a lot of use. It's going to get a lot of people faster to where they need to go. And that means they can be more productive and feel good about their day more so. And right now I am over the freeway, which as you can see, it's got heavy traffic. And this is what we want to avoid. We don't want to be in this traffic all day long. This is why we like to take the train. Seattle has had really bad traffic problems for a long time. And here you go, now I have walked the length of this bridge and I'm exiting it on the side of the North Seattle College, which is nice to have in the north end of the city. And it does look like on this side they are landscaping, so they're making more walking paths. And fun fact, that's a little bit of a wetland preserve. So it looks like they're going to finally make it walkable because it never has been actually, as far as I know. So they'll be making lanes that allow you to enjoy the preserved wetlands next to the college. And the college runs a little program for that. It's kind of nice. And this is how far they've gotten, but I see more machinery on the other side and they're running canals here to make it wet and so on. Okay, I'm back into the station and I want to find this ice rink. I am seeing some signage but I don't know where it is because it's new. Out on the street level, I do see a sign. Bike lockers, the ones I mentioned. You can totally secure your bike here. I like that because bike theft is common. But a lot of people are leaving their bikes. Maybe in this neighborhood is safer, but in the center of the city, your bike would be gone. Right there is the park and ride where there's some amount of limited space for cars to park and then take the train or the bus. Previously, it was used for buses. I see now that they've built a brand new garage here. So they have increased capacity, which was badly needed. So I'm guessing now you can park in this garage as well and be able to take the train. That's a good thing. So here's a stylized map of the city and the train. Here are we, North Gate Station. We passed by Roosevelt. Wow, that thing is now a landmark, that goofy installation. There's the university. And then the southern lines, which existed for a long time already. Here's the ferry, another major component of the city's transit network. And down here is the airport, where this line mostly originates. For a long time, it only went to the airport on the south end. Now there's one more station. There we go, Kraken Community Iceplex. Over there in the back, I may have found it. Hopefully, it has skating for the public. Here we have the team store. 
and indeed an ice rink, which I believe is where they're going to train. They have hockey gear, you see. It remains to be seen whether other people like me can come skate. Is it ever open to the public? No entry during practice, which kind of implies when there isn't practice, there will be entry. Seattle Kraken Team Store has some kind of large lobby area down here. And quite like this area here. Here we have job openings they're hiring. We have skates for rent. And we have a entry so that we can go in and see them play. That's great. I like this a lot. So right here, you can come and stop by and watch the hockey practice, it seems, for free. I don't know if it will always be for free. And I don't even know who's playing. Maybe multiple leagues will be playing here, not just the professional NHL players. Maybe sometimes it's for total beginners just learning how to skate. Here we go. This is fun, I really like this. So I did find the ice rink and it, I really, really like it. You can come here and watch hockey. I am sure at times you can even skate. You can probably see at times the professional league, the NHL players practicing. And that's all really good. I, I really like that. One day I'm going to come here and skate. But will I be buying any Kraken merch? No. Oh well, I just realized there's yet another ring on this side. So there are at least two, maybe two. Oh, three, three, so there are at least three. So this is pretty serious. There are many ice rings. I see here younger people practicing hockey with their coaches and there's obstacles. This is great. All right, I did not get any merch, but I did get a cold drink from Starbucks because all this ice made me want to cool off. It actually became warm today. And when I started, I was a little overdressed, but I'm about to finish this video. So I want to add some finishing remarks. Um, I really like that the system has expanded. All these three stations are very important. They're going to make all three of these neighborhoods thrive. Where I do get critical is how long it took for this to complete. It has been years since the last stations, and it will be close soon to three decades since the system began, and we're still working on the first line. I'm also critical of how much money it has cost and how much they're taxing us, and it's coming out of um, car tabs. So people who are driving and don't even live on the train are paying for it in very large amounts, and there's a huge scandal about that. So that's not so good. Hopefully, it keeps improving. The reason that I still live in Seattle is to a large degree that it's a walkable city. I am very much in support of that. I want to see it become more and more walkable. I want it to develop. And what you're seeing here is that, exactly that. So that's really good. And I hope to see much more of that. So there's some good, there's some bad. Overall, I think more good. And I cannot wait for the Eastern line to open, which goes east to west and it connects Seattle with Bellevue and Redmond. And then it will start looking more like a real city with many lines, or at least more than one. And you can actually start going around the metropolis without a car and not just Seattle itself. So that's going to be very exciting. As I head home now, what makes me quite happy is that I can catch the train right here at Northgate at the new station where I used to live. And it will take me all the way to my new neighborhood and I don't have to worry about any other transportation. It is simply the same line on the train. It is very, very convenient and it makes me feel like living in a real city.